Critical hit Punch All Nazis takes place in the early days of World War II and combines high adventure with cosmic horror. All dates, locations, and historical events are thrown out the window in order to create a fun story, so don't put too much thought into historical inaccuracies. All accents are done poorly, but with love, and no disrespect is intended. have left Paris on a military transport. Um, in this case, it is not a British military transport plane. It is an American plane that has been uh, moving supplies uh, from America into France and Belgium and places where they think that they can uh, help you. Uh, this is probably a good thing that you are on an American plane uh, because this way it shouldn't draw too much attention as opposed to a British plane landing in the United States. There are some interesting looks from the military personnel because your dress is definitely not military. You're all wearing civilian clothes and you are bringing bundles of things with you and no one is allowed to look at them. Uh, in this case, this is all of your guns and weaponry that, you, uh, that you've been using. Mm -hmm. So Blisco, you still have the foe seeker, sawed off shotguns, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting that, uh, you know, why is an American coming back from Europe instead of uh, staying and, and doing something in Europe? So you do get some some weird looks from some of the American uh, personnel that are on the airplane as you're flying back. And the path to America is not straight across. It's not like you fly from Paris all the way across to uh, North Carolina or something like that. You actually take a, a bit of an arc. So you leave Paris... You touch down briefly in England to uh, refuel, and then again you touch down in uh, Iceland, uh, and then once more in Nova Scotia. But at the time that you are over the air in Nova Scotia, the pilot comes back. You're all sitting in on uh, chairs and, you know, a, a hammock if you want to stretch one out. And he comes back and informs you that there's a huge winter uh, squall that has kind of blown up around the Massachusetts area and they're going to have to land in an airfield in Albany, New York. Which is close enough to Massachusetts um, but it is, uh, you know, it's definitely not Boston. It's and Arkham does not have a um, an airport. Oh. Question. Yes. Can I utilize my vehicle contact here? Um, in, in Albany. Sure. Yeah, sure. Tell us who is your, who is your, uh, contact that, you know, in Albany, uh, an uncle in upstate New York. Uh, my father's brother, uh, he's been here, uh, and it's just an easy, uh, should be able to get a hold of him real quick, like, and he'd be able to get us where we need to go since we uh, got stranded, kind of stranded, uh, unintentionally. Uh, Dutch, are you are you stranded when you guys touch down in Albany, New York? I mean, this is Dutch's hometown. Oh, huh. never mind then. So, that, yeah, the question then becomes, are you better off saving that guy? That's a good question. I, I do think it would be hilarious if... Rob is like, I, I spend one point to circumvent Rodrigo's backstory. <laughs> <laughs> so you do land at the at the uh, a small base. It is a fairly rough landing because of the snow and the wind. It is, you know, um, late December. It's like December 20th, something like that. By the time that you arrive in Albany, New York, by the time you get out of the base, and you make it into the town proper, uh, people are looking at, at Carlos a little bit differently. They have recognition in their eyes as you walk down, down the street. I don't know where you, where are you guys headed 
when you are in Albany? We'll probably head for a uh, probably like a diner or a restaurant. Okay. And then uh, Dutch is going to make some calls. Okay. You enter the diner and instantly as you enter, uh, Carlos, everybody turns and looks and you hear one person uh, with a spoon uh, clatter and you see another guy uh, jump up and rush to a uh, telephone booth and start making a phone call. You recognize <laughs> this man as a local uh, reporter for the Albany Post. Okay. Um, a, a waitress comes up and goes, oh, uh, Mr. Arbogast, um, it's, it's nice to see you here. Uh, please, by all means, have have a seat, any seat. Um, and these are your guests, please, uh, by all means. Uh, they can sit anywhere they like as well. All right. Great. Thank you. Grab a seat. Grab okay. a booth or something. All right. Nice, nice town you got here. Yeah. Um, my family's been here for a while, and uh, we've been putting money into this town for a while. So, unfortunately... Well, they really out the red carpet for you. Well, I didn't tell anybody we were coming, because I didn't expect that we were going to land in Albany. Um, but I'm sure, and like Dutch will point out the guy making a phone call, I'm sure they'll find out here momentarily. Uh, a, a fancy, um, he's not super well-dressed, but you can tell he's a businessman, uh, walks up. Well, now, Mr. Arbogast, as I live and breathe, I didn't think we were going to see you around these parts for some time. Last I heard, you was wandering off all across Europe. Oh, yep, I was, but, you know, plans change. Mm-hmm, plans certainly do change. They certainly do. Well, it's good to have you back. I hope you uh, have come back to be a part of our community once more. Um, I might be heading back out uh, here in a little bit, but I'm definitely glad to be home. That is a shame that you're heading out, and it is certainly glad that you are back home. Uh, certainly, this community has uh, certainly benefited from a lot of the Arbogast uh, uh, industries, and we certainly hope that you are around for the holidays and can partake in some of our cheer that this small town of Albany, New York, and you can see as he puts his hands up onto his uh, lapels and holds onto them, you can kind of see a little little thing that indicates that he's the mayor of the town. Uh, yeah. I hope that this little town of Albany, New York, is a place that you can come back to anytime you like. Well, thank you, sir. We'll, we'll definitely try and stick around for the holidays, at least. Good, good, good. Uh, don't forget, uh, coming up is our annual uh, Christmas dinner for the uh, unfortunate souls of this community. Uh, this year is very special as there's a different organization that has come in and decided to help uh, feed uh, the hungry of our community. And I hope, though, that that doesn't discourage you. And then he looks at everyone else and drops his eye on Blisco for a moment. And your friends uh, from <laughs> participating. Well, yeah. Uh, have your assistant uh, call us up and we'll see how we can help. Yes, yes. And then he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a handful of cigars and hands each of you a cigar. These are not the cheap, you know, five cent cigars. These are like 25 cent cigars. Mm. Yeah. These are, these are the high end cigars. Yes. Yes. I will send a uh, notice to your home uh, promptly. You have a good day, sir. You too. And he kind of waddles back to his uh, chair and table and he sits down with a couple of other guys who are all, you know, one guy's got a big old uh, fancy mustache. Another guy's got his, you know, very nice press suit on. Uh, and they're all just kind of staring at the exchange. And as you look around, there's a lot of people in the restaurant that are staring at the exchange. Sure. You know, a 25 cent cigar in 1939 was five bucks today. Yeah. That's a five dollar cigar. Uh, I will point that out to the guys. I'm like, hey, guys, this is these are fancy. So if you're used to the cheap stuff, you might want to pace yourselves. Noted. Imported? Uh, from, from Cuba. All the way from Cuba. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is before Cuban embargoes on, sure. on goods. Yeah. Uh, waitress comes back. She's pouring coffee for all of you. She even brings pie. Ah, uh, Mr. Arbogast, this is uh, your favorite, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Do you like pie? Yes, good. Uh, it's on the house. Oh, thank you. And I'll look over and see if I'm guessing the 
like the manager, or like the assist, like current manager is like somewhere in an eye shot. Yeah, you can see the you can see the cook. He looks like the person that owns this place, and he just yeah, kind of gives you a just, wave yep, from behind the back. window. Yep. Thanks for coming, Mister Arbogast. Good to see you back, and happy holidays. Oh, you too. Thanks. Uh, definitely, when he is not interacting with people, Dutch looks like uh, like he's not like angry, annoyed. He looks like. He actually, it's like embarrassing, right? But he's not, he's not like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. So much as like, uh, I did not expect this to be a circus when I showed up. Uh, the, the man comes out of the phone booth and he runs up and he goes, oh, Mr. Arbogast, Mr. Arbogast. It's, uh, uh my name is, uh, Tim, Tim Smith, uh, from the, uh, from the Albany post. Uh, it's good to see you. It's good to be back. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what brings you back? Uh, we've heard you've been traveling in Europe these last couple of years. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the record? Yes, yes. It'd be great. A great interest piece. People have been talking about you for some time. Well, I, uh, enlisted in the U.S. military for a while. Oh, really? Interesting. And, uh, I've gotten a good look at, uh, what's going on, uh, out there in Europe. And, um, why are you no longer in the military? Uh, I've been given leave. Oh, for the holidays. Good, good. This is a great piece. This is good for America. Gives boy a trip home for the holidays. This will be great copy. Sounds good. Uh, did you run into your father when he was in Europe? Uh, no. I think we were in uh, different, um, different countries the whole time. Ah, good, good. Uh, any, you've been out uh, for a couple of years. Do uh, you have any comments on your father uh, obtaining the Grand Cross of the Supreme Order? Okay. Do I know what that is? So, yeah. So the Grand Cross of the Supreme Order is like the highest honor that Germany uh, gives out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, in, in the context of our story. To like non-Germans? Uh, no, to, any, to anybody. Uh, oh. There has only been two people that the Grand Cross of the Supreme Order has been given to that are not Germans. Uh, the first one is Henry Ford. Mm -hmm. And the second one is your father. Right. Uh, Dutch will pause for a second and say, I was, uh, you understand, I've been traveling and uh, I've pretty much been in bases this whole time, so I actually didn't know that. Yep, it was uh, earlier this year. Okay, well, uh, when I see the old man, I'll have to be sure and congratulate him. Oh, uh, good, good. As son says, uh, happy for his father. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this, I think I've got enough. Uh, do you know how long you're staying in town? Oh, probably through the holidays. Not well, good, 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 good. This is going to make great copy. You've made my day. I think I'm going to get a front page right here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arbogast. Yeah, no problem. And he turns and rushes out the, out the door. Ah. <sighs> So, I'm sensing a story here. Uh, well, I think the story just went out the door, but... <laughs> um, my family has been in various industries for a while. Um, ironworks, uh, some mines, and, uh, relatively recently, munitions... So, uh, my guess is that our, um, our sales in Europe have probably increased and it's strictly west of the Rhine, mm. unless I'm misplacing the Rhine. I mean, if a river flows through it for, for sure, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so just again, a little bit of historical background for people that don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Um, Ford Motor Company mm -hmm. uh, had factories all over the world, including in Germany. And as um, as Hitler rose to power, Ford had to divest himself of all of their factories in Germany. OK, uh, Henry Ford did. Uh, but. Those factories were still in operation. 
uh, building vehicles and other things for for Germany, uh, even though that money was not part of America Ford company. Uh, it's kind of the same way. What is it? Fanta Matthew was uh, yep. was German yep. Coke or whatever it was. Um, yep. The same thing is happening here in that uh, American companies around this time are starting to be forced to be divested of their holdings in in Germany, specifically in the German held territories. But Hitler thought that Henry Ford was a great, great man. Ford is the only is one of the very few people that are name checked in Hitler's biography that he wrote while he was in prison. And they did give Ford the uh, Grand Cross of the Supreme Order in like 1936 or something like that, Mm -hmm. 37. So this is kind of a a big thing. And of course, Henry Ford, huge anti-Semite. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. So many many people did not necessarily, you know, eh, just bad. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. So for the senior Arbogast to also receive this like Ford did is is something you should be all suspect on. It is. And it so is, I'm telling and I'm sharing this not only for our listeners, for their for their background, but also because this is something all of you would know. It should right. be making everyone's teeth itch just a little um, bit. I mean, maybe you guys. Yes. Um, but. A lot of people were just like, oh, this is, a you know, this just solidifies that Ford is a great, great man. Uh, right. You know, if 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 Germany is giving um, this American their highest award, then this just means that Ford is a genius and is the it should be, uh, you know, throughout history uh, hailed as one of the as one of the greats. Yeah. Now back to our story already in progress. Da, 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 da. Uh, so yeah, we have. Um, my guess is that even though uh, Germany seems to be expropriating most of their uh, most foreign holdings, that there's still some sort of deal, and I wouldn't be surprised if, aside from uh, locally built stuff, if we were um, importing things. Um, mm. what was the name of the spy? Uh, oh, the uh, spy from uh, from from, from your last sh- yeah, from our last adventure. Him. His name is, as I scroll down through my notes, it is um Oliver Whitaker. Uh, you guys remember? Obviously, you guys remember Oliver. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was his those plans those blueprints that he was looking at um and guarding so zealously were actually made by my father's company let's see hmm. so uh th- it's very likely that someone from my family is going to meet us at some point mm-hmm. um or somebody who works for my family so I suggest that everybody keeps pretty quiet about what we've been doing. Obviously, we should do that anyway. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, my family in general is not to be trusted because um, one side is sympathizers and the other side is chismosos. And uh, Dutch will eat some pie. Mm, it's mighty good pie. Well, that's good at least. Yeah. And people seem to leave you alone for the most part uh, as everyone sits there uh, eating. So do we need to have any sort of explanation why you're traveling with uh, such an unusual retinue? Uh, Not really. I actually uh, have built up a bit of a reputation as a bohemian anyway, so... It's, you're not the first set of weirdos that I brought home. Okay. In fact, if anything, I'd say you guys are actually too clean cut for my usual uh, crew. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, had to happen like eventually. Yeah. Uh, a little, yeah. We're not going to stand out. A little girl comes up to the table. 
Mr. Valentino, can I have your autograph? And she hands you a small piece of paper. Uh, sure, kid. <laughs> I love all your movies. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, There's no yeah, way that she's seen one. any of your mo- any of Valentino's movies. She's far too <laughs> young. You can, if you look up, you can see that the mother is uh, looking at you very intently with like <laughs> stars in her eyes. Uh, who should who should he make this out to? Oh, um, and he looks back at her at her mother. <laughs> um, mom. Ah, <laughs> uh, sure, you got it. Thank you. Oh, th- good to see you, Mister Arbogast. Welcome back. Oh, thanks. And she goes running back to her mom. And her mom just picks up the picks up the paper, and she's just looking at it. And she just looks at at uh, at you, and just kind of gives you a wink, kind of. <laughs> Shake my head. Get a little wave. But the good news is um, I should be able to at least get us a car. So once things settle down, we should be able to make our way up and down New England without too many problems. And on cue, a very nice car pulls up into the in the front of the uh, cafe. Is that a Bentley? It is indeed a Royal Rolls Royce 1925 Phantom. You've been holding out on us. Well, I did throw everything in uh, my father's phase when I left. So technically none of this is mine. Uh, A man in an all black suit uh, enters. He looks around. He sees you at your table and he. Uh, walks over. He's very stiff. Good afternoon, Mr. Arbogast. I am here with the car to take you home if you so desire. Sure. Unless, of course, there's anything else that you want to do. Guys, do we need to get any uh, kerchief shopping here in uh, I think I Albany? Did. Okay. Well, let's head to the Ancestral Mans then. Okay. You go out. It is It is snowing. Your chauffeur holds the door open for all of you to get in. One of you has to sit in the front seat. Volunteer. <laughs> yeah, just yeah Blisco wants to see this thing run. Blisco was staring at the car when everything else was going on. And yeah. <laughs> was, uh, this is a beautiful black car. It is highly polished. Even in wintertime, it has a sheen on it that makes it look factory new. You can tell that uh, this car is waxed quite often. To keep its its shine, and when it starts up, it just purrs. It can you can barely hear the engine because it runs so quiet, and you can tell that the suspension on this thing is super super good. Because as you start to drive down the streets, if there's a pothole or if you take a road that is a cobblestone. You cannot feel anything in this car. It is the smoothest ride. Fancy. It's amazing. I hear they're handmade. Most things that aren't Ford are handmade right now. (laughs) So it's a 20 minute drive through Albany. Uh, As you start to move uh, to the west side of town, you start to see the houses get a little bit more. Uh, fancy the yards get bigger uh, until eventually you are in a forested region as the road continues to run straight and then you pass eventually through a big mighty gate with a giant letter a across the top and you start to go down a driveway and this driveway goes for about a mile and then suddenly the trees open up and you can see sitting on a hill the Arbogast estate. Uh, Who is the most, who is the most red amongst you? Who is not Carlos Arbogast? Assume Mm. doc. Mm. I don't know how. Yeah, probably. So the instant that you see the uh, estate, a poem comes to mind or the first line of a poem comes to mind in Xanadu did Kublai Khan, a stately pleasure dome decree. 
uh, Rodrigo, since this is your family home, how about you describe it for us? There is certainly we eventually get to the um, to the central uh, building, which is a big mansion. But um, mm-hmm. you would be um, if you're not used to that sort of thing. You probably think that we've gotten to the mansion at least once, as there are multiple buildings in the estate. Um, And they're all very fancy looking, even though, you know, that one's a shed and that one is probably like servants quarters for specifically for the gardeners and, you know, everybody that needs to work outside. Um, The house itself has a, um, uh, a like kind of roundabout up front to draw people off, which is uh, has a uh, fountain at the center of it. Um, it's probably not going, or it's going very gently right now, just because it's so cold. Um, but the house itself is a massive, uh, primarily white stone building. Um, it is uh, definitely meant to. Uh, it's meant to sort of evoke a like specifically palatial or castle like feeling. Um, it has straight up has a tower coming out of it, um, and uh, has uh, a whole section on one side that's like. Uh, just all glass, like a uh, plant, like a, yeah, like a conservatory. Like a conservatory, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and you can see all of that because the path leading up to it is sort of purposefully circuitous, so that you get at least a three quarter look at the mansion itself before pulling up to like that central roundabout. Um, and you know, obviously, all the servants are there waiting for their musical number. Yep. Uh, So the car pulls up, the chauffeur lets you all out and you go to the front door. And as you approach, the door opens and there is an older gentleman there in a finely tailored, uh, I wouldn't say a tuxedo, but is definitely a butler's uniform. Uh, Mr. Arbogast, welcome back. It's nice to have you here. It would have been nice if we would have known you were coming. We could have. I had more preparations for you. Unfortunately, your mother and father are currently in Europe, attending to business affairs there. Well, that's all right, Higgins. I didn't know I was coming either. You'll have to take it up with Poseidon. I see, sir. Um, Does will you be staying Higgins? long? No, yes, of course. <laughs> will you be staying long? Uh, We are hoping to mostly weather the storm here, and then we'll be on our way. Uh, But we might come back. Uh, We're definitely going to be in the area for certainly a few weeks, maybe through the holidays. Oh, very good. I will make sure your room is ready, and your guests, I assume, will also be staying. And he looks at all of you. And he looks down at all your shoes, which are dripping snow and mud from the short walk uh, through town and through the uh, driveway up to the house. He looks a little bit exasperated by that. Um, yes, they will be staying. Please uh, ready some rooms for them. He turns and he nods to a woman who's wearing a maid's uniform and she nods back and goes uh, rushing off to prepare the rooms. Well, please come in out of the cold, sir. Thank you. Uh, would um, you like some drinks in the library? Uh, sure. Very good, sir. And he starts to walk away. Um, there is a, there's a, you know, a grand staircase, a split grand staircase that goes up and meets at the top where you saw the maid uh, rush off to. Uh, off to the left is a dining, a giant dining area. Uh, off to the right is a sitting area. And then uh, further down the main hallway you, is where your library would be located. Uh, Dutch will 
take off his hat mm-hmm. and flick it onto a uh, buck head uh, okay. antler on the wall. Mm-hmm. And uh, he'll say, uh, this way, gentlemen. All right. You walk down and you enter the library. And the library is like, for those like of you that like library. Books, This is like the grandest library. This is a two-story library. There's a couple of circular staircases on each end of the library that allows you to go up to a walkway along the second floor. And literally from floor to second story ceiling, lined with books of all shapes and sizes. Some of these books, hundreds of years old, covering every topic uh, imaginable. On the far end of the library as you walk in is just floor to ceiling windows, uh, which are currently covered with drapes because um, even though you do live in a majestic house, uh, Carlos, Mm -hmm. um, it does still get drafty in the wintertime. And so the curtains are closed, but there is a glorious fireplace um, burning also at the far end. And there are sitting chairs uh, arranged throughout the room and a table down the center. Uh, for people to sit and and do their studies there if they need to. Caverns measure us to man indeed. Indeed, 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 indeed. Echo. Echo, 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 echo. Oh, this old wow. thing? Yeah. Uh, oh, good. They got the, I don't know, sherry out. That's not like <sighs> something people would drink. Higgins comes in with a tray and uh, so have a seat and I shall get you uh, your favorite drink. And he sits it down. He p- pours whiskey for everybody, uh, except for Dutch, or except for Carlos, uh, who he pours water for. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, dinner shall be served in an hour. Great. And he leaves. Yep. Dutch will sit in an overstuffed chair. Just actually just kind of like look at everybody else and see like what their faces look like. (laughs) Lisko is just looking around in awe. Doc is actually trying not to show how incredibly impressed he is and probably failing. Say Valentino looks a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Maybe a bit antsy. Yeah. Uh, What's the matter, Valentino? Not uh, not used to having opulence shoved in your face. <sighs> no, I'd say the opposite there. Um, oh. Feeling a little bit close to home. Yeah, I'm starting oh. to feel like you and I have a lot in common. Uh, kind of gathered. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the this is my childhood home. Uh, you know for during the fall and winter of course um, sure. there's another one yeah we've got a we've got a beach house <laughs> they summer uh, in the south Plisco. we we do that the fancy folk i think i need to find some books these this is mm. well by all means uh just uh you know some of these books are very old, and actually, I don't know that any of them, or too many of them, have been pulled out to be read recently. So, you know, don't pull them from the spine. Yeah. The As you look around, there are certainly stuff that has been published in the last 20 years that are open. All of these are all very nice leather-bound stuff. You can find uh, all, of the, all of the modern classics, all the Mark Twains, all of the Great Gatsby's, all of that stuff, uh, all lining up. The older, older books, the ones that are like 100, 200 years old, they are all behind uh, glass doors uh, mm-hmm. and they're, they're locked. So you're not going to be able to touch the really old books. That's a first and, edition Ivanhoe. It is. Oh, is it? Oh, my. Blisco, as you look around, stuck in, in one of the uh, places is a... Uh, copy of uh, Action Comics number one. It's just kind <laughs> of crammed into a spot. Um, this comic came out the year before, just before you were about to enter into the military. Grab it. Has Superman joined the 
Oh, oh no. Yeah. Super, no. no, Superman has only been out for a year at this point. It oh. won't be until after the bombing of Pearl Harbor that you see comic books and a lot of that stuff get into the into the war yeah. fight. I was under the assumption that most of the American comics entered the war well before America did. <laughs> Yes and no. Uh, probably the first real political statement that called out the war would have been the spring of 41. And that was probably Captain America Comics number one, which I think had a street date of March or April of that year. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Superman was mostly uh, beating up on uh, your, your evil landlords. Yeah. And people who would, you know, cheat the the innocent folk of Metropolis at this point. Oh, and uh, punching out the ultra humanite because why not? Yeah. Uh, okay. if, if Dutch sees Bliss pull that out, he's like, "Hey, I I brought that in." I was gonna uh, ask if that was yours. Yeah, there's a couple in here that I put in here. One because they were interesting, but two because uh, my dad actually spends a fair amount of time in the library. And I wanted to see if he would spot them, uh, like this one. And he'll pull out, like, like, uh, there's, there's a detective comics number one. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, this one. And uh, here's one by Langston Hughes. You guys know him? Uh, I don't believe I had the pleasure. Oh. Yeah. And uh, here, this one is just uh, a uh, partiture for a honky tonk. <laughs> but I'm sure if you uh, if we get Higgins drunk enough, he can probably play it on the harpsichord. And yes, we do have a <laughs> harpsichord. Oh, <laughs> I have a whole new appreciation for you, Dutch. Oh yeah, knowing that you walked away from your family. I mean that I I I support that. I respect that. Knowing that you walked away from this family. That that. Probably took more guts than. Hmm. Well, it's their own fault. They uh, raised me to be a moral person, and then went out and uh, chose mo money over people. Hmm. Which I'm guessing my dad had just always done. It just wasn't ever as obvious. We had business partners. And more importantly, like family friends in Warsaw. Mm -hmm. And uh, he certainly doesn't talk about them anymore. I don't even know if they're alive. So, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's tough to walk away from, you know, the six square meals a day. Um, my. Thanks. Well, sure. Um, you, the. Um, Price Palomino in the stables. That's like that's behind the estate. We didn't we didn't get to see that on the way in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, I I have to live with myself, right? So staying here seemed like less and less of an option. Mm -hmm. And you know, I still get all the privilege. I was uh, educated at a fine school. People that know my father know me, so I've been able to talk my way into plenty of places so it's not like i completely cut myself off um but i cut myself off enough uh to make a statement i suppose mm, statements to parents yep i don't know how uh, effective any of that is as you guys know it's not like it's uh slow down the the company's uh, involvement but uh, i'm only one person yeah. well anything else you can do but continue to fight the good fight yeah higgins walks in gentlemen dinner is served and he exits yep all right let's go i'm gonna bet you right now i got a dollar crisp dollar that says there's a squab <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> Just take one. that action. All right. You walk down the hallway squad. into um, a set of double doors, uh, heavy oak wooden doors, and those doors open up into, again, a huge dining area. This is like 
the main dining area. The first one that you saw when you came in, that's like the, uh, the auxiliary, the auxiliary <laughs> dining area. It's like <laughs> where, you know how uh, during Thanksgiving kids get to sit at the little table, the kids uh, get to sit in the auxiliary dining room. This is the main <laughs> dining room. And it, again, it's, it's two stories and there's a huge table right down the middle of the room that seats like easily 20 people, nice, big, high back, uh, wooden chairs. There is oak paneling all the way, dark oak paneling all the way around uh, the room. And uh, that goes up, uh, you know, eight feet or so. And then above that are windows all the way around. Uh, these are all drawn tight. Hanging from the ceiling are uh, massive chandeliers. They are all lit up that cast a glow through the whole room on uh, the far end of the table. As you enter is a massive fireplace. Uh, burning warmly and greeting everyone as you enter. And above the fireplace is a portrait of a man, a man who is big and broad shouldered. He has very dark hair, uh, a very um, big, dark mustache. He's wearing an expensively tailored suit. He is sitting at, in a, um, a chair, uh, you know, a, a comfy chair like you would see in in the library, a leather chair. His legs are crossed and in his hand he is holding a uh, a glass of of some kind of alcohol. Uh, he has a very stern expression on his face. So the first thing that you see when you enter the room after you look at this is this picture of a man who's staring back at you with this kind of glaring disappointment coming from his eyes uh, and then standing kind of next to him and slightly behind the chair is a, a woman. Uh, she has also very, very dark hair. She's wearing a very expensive tailored suit. Her, uh, her skin is, is darker, uh, than, uh, than, than John Arbogast, the, the man that is looking at you. Uh, it is clear that she is of, uh, Latin descent or Hispanic descent. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that this is, this is uh, Carlos's mother. She also kind of stands proudly with a slight smile on her face. Well, those eyes follow you all through the room, don't they? Uh, and past it. <laughs> yeah. The glare of disappointment follows you everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, yes, that is my father and that is my mother. Although my mother, I don't think ever really liked this portrait. And uh, as a slight side of rebellion, she got that. Uh, Matisse, and he'll like point at like another corner of the place that has like, you know, a Matisse, like a I don't know, like a lady with a hat or like a little landscape or whatever. I don't know what he had done at that point. There are several people standing around the chairs, um, obviously servants, waiting for you to all enter and sit. Yeah, we'll get seated. They pull the chairs back and let you sit, and they push them in. And you're all sitting there, and then at that moment, uh, there is an empty chair that a person is still standing behind, and the, the doors open up again, and a younger boy walks in. He's probably 16 years of age. Uh, he is also got a darker complexion uh, and dark hair. He is wearing a very fancy um, suit. Uh, it's nicer than the mayor's suit that you saw earlier, and he enters, oh, hello, cousin I heard you were back in town. Hey, hey. And he comes up and he gives you a very big, warm embrace and you hug each other. Welcome back. And he gives you a big kiss on your cheek. Yep. I'll kiss his head. Guys, this is my cousin, Felipe. This is Felipe, right? I believe so. Isn't that, yep. is that the one you wrote the letter to? Yep. Hey, ah, hey. Hello, gentlemen. And he gives you all kind of a little bow. And before he goes and he sits down and has the chair pushed in. What brings you back so soon? Oh, we managed to talk our way into leave. Ah, yes, yes. Very good. You've always got a good tongue. Yep. It gets me into trouble half the time, but gets me out of it the other half of the time. So. And how is Europe? Uh, Europe is. Uh, a mixed bag right now, I'd say. Yes, absolutely. A mixed bag. That's a good way of putting it. Um, some places are doing fine, and some places are not even there anymore. There's just a hole. 
or a crater. What's going on in Spain? That was the last time uh, I knew you were doing something before you went into into the American military. Yeah, uh, Spain is not great. Uh, the you know that guy with all the yelling, Franco. He's uh, mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think he's actually fully in power at this point. Mm. Well, that certainly must have been interesting. Yep. Uh, certainly help me uh hone my incendiary skills oh really and he kind wow. of you'll have to tell me all about it later and at yeah. that moment uh a bunch of people just walk in they've got covered silver covered trays that they sit down in front of all of you and simultaneously with the nod from the uh from higgins uh, all of the silver uh, lids come off and the first course is a delicious butternut squash soup mm. No, oh, Higgins, you've outdone yourself again. This is delicious. I can't wait to dive in and finish the rest. Oh, very good, sir. Well, I'm glad you're here to uh, keep Higgins company. Yes, I mean, with your mother and father gone, I'm kind of in charge. Great. Smartest, smartest uh, head of household we've had in a long time. <laughs> and he just laughs and he's like, uh. I wouldn't let too many people over here. You say that uh, could have some repercussions. Mm. I am not too worried about it. I think pretty much everybody in the house knows how I feel. Yes, uh, some. Though don't agree with you. Oh, I'm sure they don't agree with me. Yes. Um. So, uh, gentlemen, um, you're a movie star. Oh, right. Sorry. Where are my manners? Uh, this is Valentino, and that's Doc, and that's uh, Bug Eater, a.k.a. Blisco. His nickname's too long. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And he kind of pushes the plate of, of soup away from him after hearing the word Bug Eater. So, gentlemen, how did you all meet? Uh, we're actually all in the same unit. Yep. Oh, so you were able to get all of your friends off on leave as well. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the military does stuff like that all the time. They dissolve units and move them into other places. So they're like, okay, well, all of you guys get out of here. And then I don't know if we're all going to be together when we get back, but uh, that's that's how we started out. I see. And how are things going in in Europe? Uh, well, um, the last thing we did was in Belgium, which is fine. Um, Mm -hmm. but, um, certainly there's, you know, problems in France, obviously, um, all of Eastern Europe is having a lot of issues right now. What with the Reich and all. We get so many mixed messages here and he kind of snaps his fingers and, uh, Higgins steps forward and hands him, uh, the newspaper Mm -hmm. and he slides it across to you and, yeah, on the front page is uh, news about FDR and his uh, his efforts to try and uh, pull people further out of the Depression and the public works projects. You know, there's a big story about that. Uh, uh, quotes from FDR on his fireside speeches uh, from that week. Uh, as you flip through the newspaper, you can see uh, things about um, uh, people are really questioning why is uh, why is this socialism such a bad thing? If Hitler says that he can unite the world, why aren't we listening to, to this man? Um, uh, you see things that talk about how people need to pay more attention to what is going on in, in Germany uh, specifically and in Europe, because pretty soon that will come here. And uh, America is not ready for if the war comes to the, to the U S front. Uh, there's a weird op-ed piece talking about the Hayes Code and mm-hmm. how the Hayes co- movie code is uh, stifling messaging coming out of Hollywood about the dangers of of Hitler and how how dare the Hollywood industry uh, do this. Uh, and then there's other local stories, right? Uh, you know, a boy falls from window trying to imitate, uh, you know, this comic book Maybe character, character Superman. Uh, there's another one about a house that has burned down. Uh, there are several, uh, ads that you see about this holiday banquet that's coming up in a few days. 
and that as many people are invited as as possible. Uh, they even say things like, you don't have to be in need to uh, need others during the holidays. And please welcome and come and feast on on great food. Uh, and so there's several ads of that. But then, of course, there's the you know, Santa Claus at the local uh, gimbal store and uh, those those kinds of things that you see in throughout the newspaper. And so it's you do. You can see what your cousin is saying. You can see what Felipe is saying yeah. about mixed messaging that's that's coming out right now. How do we know, you know, is are people making this up or, you know, are people making up uh, lies? Are they telling the truth? Who knows? Yeah. Anything about the situation in Italy? No, but the but you do see that um, because you are relatively cl- close to Canada, there is a <laughs> an article about the Italian um, ambassador from Canada was arrested uh, among um, uh, uh, amid cheers of lock him up, lock him up, and this has caused a really great rift between Canada and Italy right now. Canada is like we don't know why this is happening. We don't appreciate these unprovoked attacks. Uh, Italy is saying that uh, Canada is lying and that they are the aggressors in this and that uh, they will do everything possible to get retribution for the 15 people that were killed uh, by Canadians in uh, in Venice. Um, okay. <laughs> Just gloss over that. Uh, <laughs> is... Uh, th- so this is like today's newspaper. Yeah, this is today's newspaper. Okay. Do they have a thing on any sort this of is, like weather predictions? Uh, yeah, there is the weather page and, um, it's a whole page. It's got a map of all of New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and what is that? Uh, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and Maine, right? Are those all the ones. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, it shows the weather and it shows lake effect snows are coming in as the um as the jet stream dips down so there's going to be a lot of snow blowing all throughout you know throughout uh this region for the next couple of days probably going to be not super cold roads should hopefully be passable but um travelers going home for the holidays especially if they're going up into mountainous regions should take care make sure they oh. take chains for their tires yeah what's the date right now uh today is december 20th okay so yeah we really might as well just spend the holidays here or at least christmas certainly looking that way besides nobody's gonna be at the like the arkham library on these days i mean they might be but fair enough yeah so to get to arkham it would take you because arkham is about um in the north central part of massachusetts it would take you Probably a it, with these weather conditions would take you a good day of travel, yeah. but you're also going through some hilly countryside and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's also very rural and remote. Yeah. I mean, is it like, is it unreasonable to just like spend the next like five days? No, here? no. Okay. F- Felipe seems pretty excited okay. to think that you might be here for the holidays. In fact, uh, you did notice that as you enter the the house has been decorated for the holidays. So there are garlands hanging up. Uh, you did notice um, in uh, off to the, to the parlor, to the right, there was a massive uh, Christmas tree that was fully decked out. Um, there were presents under the trees. Some of them you may have noticed were addressed to you. Um, and are the, yeah, are it, they lit with candles? Is this tree mm-hmm. like, no, this would be, this is the time of electricity. My man, Oh, oh, these would be ooh. these would be electric lights on the Mancy. But it is a very tall tree, probably about a 12 foot tall tree. Very decadent. Uh, also, I would say uh, if a definitely a nativity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and probably a pretty fancy one. Yes. Nice porcelain. Yep. Large. Nice. Yep. Like artisan made. Mm hmm. Probably imported from Italy. Life size. No, not life size, but just like um, just servants at all yeah, times just, being in the nativity. around. How are you? Little little uh, you know, man with a cigar just sitting there and lying in the Yeah, the live animals really make the, the room smell. Yeah. <laughs> See, make you cough. Be careful. 
while they're eating, Dutch will pull out a, I want to say lira, right? Yep. Like a mm-hmm. coin from Italy. Yeah. And he'll, he'll like put it on the table and like push it towards uh, Felipe and be like, oh, I got you this too. Ah, he picks it up. Ah, this is beautiful. Such craftsmanship. I love seeing bunnies from all over the world. <laughs> yeah, Europe is actually very small, so it's not that hard to get stuff from other places. Oh, I can understand. I wish I could go. I wish I wish Uncle would let me go, but he just insists that I stay here. Yeah, maybe it's better for you to stay here for now. But you don't understand. I want to go and see what's going on in, in Mexico. I want to go and see what's going on in France and Spain and... All the stories you tell me just make me want to get out, but Uncle just insists that I stay and learn the family business. Well, that's probably best for now. I got lucky. When I was your age, things were easy. (laughs) No, were they? Oh, yeah. Hardly any fascists. Mm, I guess, but there was the Kaiser, right? I've heard stories. Yeah, I'm not that old, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like this is like I World mean, War, you're like World War One and World War Two. Yeah, it was 1939. So, World War One would have ended like 21 years ago. Yeah, I think so. You would have been yeah, born after. You've probably been born after or right at the end of. Yeah, of World so it's War like, One. You know, I was like a kid when people were like talking about that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like I do feel like that's. Actually, maybe true. Like Dutch was lucky in that sense, and that it was a period of rebuilding for Europe, and here's all this American money, and he got to uh, basically go places, riding that wave as a young man. Yes, but then here at home, the economy collapsed. Fortunately, our family has been able to survive. It would have been nice if you would have been here to help. Yeah, I deserve that. I probably lost everything. I mean, it doesn't look like we almost lost everything. Well, fortunately, father's munitions factories were able to create that buffer for us. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, I should say uncles. Uncles. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we are doing okay now. But who knows with this Roosevelt and his crazy ideas, what might might uh, happen? I mean, I'm not going to argue that. That guy does seem a little unhinged. What do you, uh, I've heard the rumors of somebody named Eisenhower who is pretty high in the military. What do you, what yeah, do you he's heard like, about him? uh, he's the, he's like the chief. Yeah. What do you think of him? Um, Have you met him? We did meet him briefly. Yeah. Um, I don't, I've, I found, uh, having been in the military, that I have trouble trusting anybody who's a who makes a career in the military. Mm. So you don't plan on making a career in the military? I don't think so. Well, I hope when I sign up in two years that I will be uh, stationed with you. You're thinking of signing up? Of course. Why wouldn't I? Mm. I I've read your letters. I mean, that's probably fine. It doesn't look like... Uh... The U.S. is ever going to jump into this, so you'll probably be safe. Hmm. I could find where you are and get stationed with you. We could pull some strings. I can't wait. And they come in with another um, covered dish. Yeah, this time uh, Higgins is like, I'm sorry, sir. We didn't know so many of you would be here tonight. So we have to have squab. And he pulls it <laughs> away, and there's just these little tiny, just these little tiny birds, individual servings of bird there for you to, to enjoy. I mean, honestly, it's a very quick, you know, instead of trying to roast a 30-pound turkey or something, it's uh, right. get, get the squab in the oven, and you can have it done in an hour. That's fine. Higgins, uh, Doc over there was uh, hoping there'd be squab. No. Uh, good. Glad we could make your day, sir. The staff has been very busy. Let's go rummages around in a pocket real quick and just slides (laughs) a handful of change over to a doc. Pleasure doing business. And of course, there's some roasted potatoes and some asparagus. Mm -hmm. Ah, very good. Thank you, Higgins. 
Oh, thank you, son. And he goes out. Higgins has been with the family for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell he's he's aged 100 years in the time we've seen him. <laughs> he just keeps All getting older excitement. every time. <laughs> <laughs> every time he walks in, he's like visibly older. Yeah, Higgins has been here for a long time. Um, actually, I think he actually may have delivered Felipe because we couldn't get the doctor over here on time. It was quite a day, sir. Well, I appreciate it. I would have hated to have him stay in there. Yes, I was also around when your father was your age. Oh, yeah? Yes. Handful? He was quite the handful, yes. <laughs> I'm he sure was, he was. Uh, as he was at times, uh, got into a lot of trouble. But I shouldn't tell stories with others here. Sure. Tales out of school and all that. Uh, Higgins, is any, do, are we planning on anybody else uh, arriving before the holidays? Not, not to my knowledge, sir. Your mother and father said they would be in Europe indefinitely, working on a project of some kind. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um... I think uh, once we're done with dinner, maybe we'll spend a little bit of time in the music room. And uh, then tomorrow, assuming the weather is not absolutely terrible, um, I'd like to go downtown and do some shopping. Very good, sir. I will make sure you have a bigger car to accommodate everyone. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh... Felipe, would you be going with him? Uh, I, I, probably not. I was probably going to go down and meet with the uh, the holiday gathering that is going on. Uh, they said they were uh, hoping for a small contribution, so I thought that I would go down and see what they were about. Oh, yeah. When does that start? Uh, it will start on the 22nd. And where was it? Uh, it is downtown. At the big uh, community hall. Did it say anything about who was sponsoring it? Nope. Does the oh. newspaper say anything about who was sponsoring it? No, it just said, okay. you know, it's just basically come down, eat, eat the food, come and drink, be merry. You know, uh, now's a time of community and friendship, especially during these dark times of, uh, you know, of, uh, of the depression. Yeah. And then the uh, the final meal comes. Uh, uh, Doc, how was this squab? Um, of all the squab I've had, it's it's very very much. Hey, good, sir. Dessert is coming up soon. Uh, we had the chef make a your favorite uh, pie. Oh, great! Would you like some iced cream with it as well? Oh, sure. If you're churning, uh, I'm sure someone is. Uh, I don't do that. I <laughs> know it's a. Thanks, Higgins. And he turns and leaves. Well, this has certainly been an exciting day. Yeah. We uh, didn't even know we were going to end up here, so it's been nice being oh, back home. Where were, you, where were you headed? Um, We uh, lost a uh, comrade. Oh. So uh, we were hoping to make a quick stop here in New England and then head over to... Uh, see his family down south. Um, that's that's very nice of you. Yeah, we. I think we were hoping to get there before uh, the holidays, but we'll just have to see them after all our business here is done and after the storm's done. So, okay. And then pie and ice cream arrives along with uh, a after dinner wine, plum brandy, and you guys enjoy the rest of your meal. Mmm, mmm, indeed. Going to drink all of this plum brandy. I, it's um, so it's, it's plum empty. very. It hits you hard. Why don't you roll a um? Why don't you roll a brawn plus? Uh, <laughs> what is it? Brawn plus uh, resistance or resistance. resilience? Resilience. Yeah, brawn plus resilience. This is a very uh, fine plum brandy. So you're going to have to do a D two on this one. 
<laughs> well, okay. Do, 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 do. Hang on. Which direction does it go? Uh, let's go both <laughs> ways. That's a question mark. Zero successes. Oh! Zero successes for the doc. Uh, yeah, so after dinner, you all stand up and doc instantly is like tripping and falling and it's like ooh, that's some pretty strong wine there. Alright, uh, alright, so alright doc, alright. I, I will take him upstairs and put him it's to bed, a... sir. Oh, I think we better keep him vertical for just a little bit. I will take care of it, sir. Alright, make and sure he... you drink some water. Yes, sir. And he takes Doc out of the room, takes you upstairs, and put takes you into a very fancy room. Uh, sir needs to learn to control his liquor, especially when dealing with the Arbogast. Uh, what do you call a collection of wine? That's good advice. Oh, what is that called? I will just call it the, the Arbogast collection. <laughs> the Arbogast. I mean, this a lot of this stuff uh, probably goes back uh, pre-prohibition, right? So uh, there was a lot of this stuff being amassed uh, by wealthy families as yeah. prohibition was looking to go into effect. And so as long as you had it uh, and you purchased it before prohibition went into effect, you could keep it. So a lot of the best wines were brought in. There may be some... Uh, some uh, stuff, yeah, some hooch that came in from uh, um, those peasants, the Kennedys. Uh, you know, they don't make as much money as as the Arbogasts do. Mm. But uh, and it's all oh, new yeah, money. that new money. Gosh. Mm-hmm. Well, and of course, you know, we've we've been in Italy, which I we've had wine, but I'm wondering if it's like a like a new wine. I don't know this it's stuff. Like, oh, all all you know is the alcohol content wine. in this doc is. A lot. Try to lighten yeah, my breath. So, um, you know, Higgins helps you undress. He makes sure that you have uh, plenty of, of water to drink. Um, you know, do you? Mm-hmm. Does does he speak no. Greek? Okay, so he, he doesn't understand it when I thank him. Nope, he does not. But he just uh, uh, tries to tuck <laughs> you into bed. Good night, sir. And he turns off the lights. Uh, you're back in a in a sitting room, uh, a gentleman's lounge for the rest of you. This is a again heavily wooded uh, room. It's got a bar at one end, fireplace, obviously big fireplace, big chairs, all of that. There's a uh, pool table in the middle of the room. Okay. Is Felipe still with us? Or yeah, Felipe is still hanging out with you. Okay. Well, we'll keep it light then. Okay. Just, all right. you know, chit chat about what's going on around town. Yeah, he's telling you all the gossip about uh you may remember a girl that was a year behind you, Susie. Uh she ended up getting married uh, last year to uh the high school sweetheart Danny. Uh they had a kind of a big wedding. Everybody was was uh, pretty happy. A lot of people turned out to that wedding. Uh unfortunately, Felipe, uh his girlfriend, uh you know, decided that she was interested in someone else made Felipe a little angry. Mm. Um, but you know, he's, he's fine because he knows that there's a lot of other, uh, great women in this town and, uh, he's an Arbogast. So he doesn't think that he's going to be single for too long. Yeah. And there's that kind of chit chat, maybe some pool that's being played Blisco and, and Valentino playing some pool. And then, uh, around 10 o'clock Felipe kind of stretches. Uh, uh, I think, uh, Cousin, that I need to go and and turn in. I've got that meeting tomorrow to uh, see what's going on with this this dinner, and so I'm going to bid you good night. And again, he gives All you right. a big hug. Yeah, gives you a kiss on the cheek. He looks you right in the eye. He's like, "So happy that you're back." Wow, it's good to be back. And uh, and he leaves. Yep, good kid. It's good. Ah, uh, maybe I can help. Uh... Stare your family's business in the right direction, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to, honestly, it's hard to stay normal when you're surrounded by this much money. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, how about you roll me a uh, reason plus observation D1. Okay. What's a 12 total? 
two successes. Two successes. All right, very good. Uh, yeah, as you as you're saying that, you can kind of get the feeling that uh, Felipe is kind of conflicted. Um, there's a little bit of hero worship that obviously he has for you, and he wants to do the same things that you're doing. But at the same time, he's away from his family, mm-hmm. and he's living in this opulent uh, space. Yeah. And of course, he's being influenced by your mother and father all of the time. And so there you can tell that he has a very strong draw towards money and business, that that is something that is uh, is attracting him very, very much uh, in his in his uh, in his age. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos definitely looks like he's about to start talking a couple of times and then he just gets quiet. And just thoughtful. And somewhere you hear a, a clock ring. Go ahead, um, Rob. Something on your mind? Oh, no, same thing. Just uh, this kid, you know, he's a good kid, but money messes with you. It it makes you think that certain, that people, some people are more important than others. So I don't want that to happen to him. But it's hard when you have actual servants and Nobody takes the time to tell you that your servants are people and they also deserve, you know, breaks and 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 to be thought of as people. Yeah. This place, uh, you came out fine. Yeah, but I came out fine because I was rebellious and I probably, if my father had been a humble shoemaker i would have probably been rebellious and uh you know still tried to go out to the local like bar or whatever you know what i mean like i i was it it was sort of luck that i just happened to have the right personality to not just kind of kick back and enjoy all this because it's hard not to kick back and enjoy all this I don't feel guilty about doing it today, but uh, definitely when I was uh, kicking around Europe, uh, there were a lot of places where I thought, um, here are groups of people that don't get breaks the way that I did. Not Europeans in general. (laughs) There's a lot of wealthy Europeans. I mean... You know, the people that do things that aren't considered all that important, like art, for example. You know, if you want to if you want to really live, hang out with some musicians for a while and see if you can put together enough for a croissant. You have any reactions to this uh, discussion, Brian? Mm, uh, uh, Probably just a bit of a smirk and. Knowing nod. Okay. Anyway, um, I feel like it's been a while since we haven't been in a rush, so uh, I think I'm going to go to sleep and try to get a good solid nine hours in. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock, though. You hear somewhere off in the in the uh, palatial estate a grandfather clock chimes the hour and it just you can hear it kind of echo throughout the entire building <laughs> they're so rich they use real <laughs> grandfathers uh so everybody is off to bed um carlos you are in your room that you had growing up and so you know there's um kind of a dark green paint on the wall with a wainscoting of uh of of, of oak uh there's Pennants uh, from all of the the sports teams, of course, Yale and Duke and Miskatonic are all hanging up there. Uh, mm-hmm. You probably have some framed uh, pictures of a baseball team that you enjoyed um, watching as you were a kid. You can find your your yearbooks are stacked up uh, in a corner. Uh, you have a desk there, a bed there, a very big bed. Of course, uh, everybody has en suite for their for their uh, rooms. Mm-hmm. And you, of course, you have a very nice, big, comfy bed that you haven't slept in in four or five years. Yeah. I imagine the Miskatonic mascot being the fighting polyps. 
<laughs> no, no. Uh, I honestly, I would have to look. There is actually an official mascot for Miskatonic. I would have to go and look it up really quick. Were were the Dodgers yeah. around, and were they still in New York? Uh, probably yes. The Dodgers would be in and, Brooklyn, and, and, and yes, in yeah. thirty nine. So, Probably does have, in fact, a New York Dodgers like pennant somewhere. And it is autographed. It is, uh, you have a picture of them as well, the team, your favorite team of, of that year, whatever year it was, and it's autographed by all of them. Nice. <laughs> ah, good to be home. You all go to bed and Back. sleep well as the wind blows outside the house uh, because, again, Every every big house is going to have leaks, but some occasionally you can see the curtains blow, but they're all heavy curtains, and you all sleep throughout the night. Critical Hit Punch Hall Nazis is a production of Major Spoilers Entertainment and was produced and edited by me, Stephen Schleicher. If you would like to get a behind-the-scenes making of this episode, be sure to check out the GM Roundtable Octum Cthulhu Edition at our Patreon page, patreon.com slash majorspoilers. Each week, I discuss my plans for the upcoming game session, and Dr. Brad Will is there to share his reactions and advice on how to be a better game master. I will warn you, though, there are spoilers galore in every installment of the GM Roundtable Octoon Cthulhu edition. So, if you don't like spoilers and don't want to know what I am planning next, don't listen to these episodes. Though, I will say, if you do listen, you'll be able to see how and where the players throw a wrench into my plans, And you're also going to have greater insight into the world that's being built into this campaign. This week, we didn't have any named NPCs, so no shout outs to our associate producers this week. But next week, we'll feature a lot of surprises and more than a few of our wonderful patrons will become NPCs in this game. You want your name to appear as one of these NPCs in future episodes? All you need to do is become an associate producer at patreon.com slash major spoilers. Finally, we want you to record yourself doing your best on critical hit and send it to us at podcast at major spoilers.com. And your voice will join the growing chorus of fans in upcoming episodes as well. Thank you again for listening this week. And here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2023 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.